Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine, like the flower. Today I am going to be doing my first and probably my last story time because I personally don't think my life is that interesting. But this story right here was a crazy one. So let's just jump right into it. So to really set the scene for you guys, I'm gonna have to give you some background on my family, okay? My dad is from Detroit first generation college student. My mom was a third generation college student from a small town here in Mississippi, okay? They met at, drum roll please, Jackson State, okay? Where did my grandfather and my great grandfather go on my mother's side? Drum roll please, Jackson State. Yeah, that's right. If Things had worked out the way I thought they were supposed to have worked out because everything happens for a reason. I would have been a fourth generation Jackson State graduate, but that is not what happened. So the story begins in 2018 when I had taken a medical leave from the college I was attending in Atlanta, Georgia. The year I graduated high school, my mom moved back down to Mississippi. So whenever I would go home for breaks, like for fall break, spring break, freshman year of college, I would be coming here to Mississippi. Down here was my home. like that's technically where my permanent address was but since being in college I hadn't spent more than like a couple of weeks here in Mississippi so it was still very unfamiliar to me so when I took my medical leave there was just so much going on and I was in so much pain and I basically had to get reacclimated to this new lifestyle that had been brought, up, brought about because of my illnesses while also getting used to a very different place because Jackson, Brookhaven, Mississippi is very different from Detroit or from Atlanta. So that was a really hard time for me. And then I was trying to figure out what I needed to do so that when I came back next semester everything would be fine and I wouldn't fall too far behind because at this point I had to withdraw from my school halfway through the semester so there was no way I wasn't going to be behind. In the midst of trying to get better it took me about four months, four months that didn't need to happen if we listened to black mental health patients it wouldn't have had to been four months but that's a story for another time and during this time i'm trying to figure out what my next moves are for the following semester i didn't know if i would be fully healed and be able to go back to atlanta or some more things were going to happen and i would need to stay here in mississippi and i ended up having two surgeries that following semester so I did end up having to stay in Mississippi anyway. My mother teaches at a community college here full time, so that means that I can take classes there and not have to pay for tuition. So I was like, okay, this is great. I'll take some classes at this community college so that I can transfer them back over when I get back to Atlanta and I won't be too far behind. Let me tell you something, liberal arts colleges make it very hard for you to transfer from their school to another school and they also make it very hard for you to transfer credits from another school back to their school because they're money hungry okay so I had to be very particular about the classes that I took because they were very finick they were very finicky about what they chose to accept this is like weeks upon weeks of trying to contact the I think it was like the associate dean of students dean of academic affairs at my old school like hey can I take this she's like yeah you can take this but you can't take that and if you take this then you can't take this and that means you can't transfer it over it was just a big hassle I had settled on some things that I could take and that they would transfer over after this semester where I had stopped around midterm times that semester had ended and this was the following semester so this was the spring semester of 2019 I was taking full-time classes actually overload classes at the community college my mother teaches at and probably like four weeks maybe two months in it hit me like a ton of bricks that I was paying way too much money to go to the school that I was going to in Atlanta. I would have been in so much debt had I stayed at that school. I was put on to Phi Theta Kappa which is an international honor society for community college students and basically if you have a GPA it's like a 3.5 or above then you can join Phi Theta Kappa and there are a plethora of scholarship opportunities for Phi Theta Kappa graduates and one of these schools that had a phenomenal scholarship for Phi Theta Kappa was I said okay maybe everything happens 
for a reason maybe this is divine order maybe it was meant for me to stay here in mississippi so i definitely like i totally do a repivot and i'm like finally accepted the fact that i am not going back to atlanta so now it's more about finding the curriculum jackson state's curriculum and taking the classes i need so that it'll be easier for me to transfer over to jackson state so that was that's what i was doing i finished up that semester and now it's the summer of 2019 and i also taken a full-time load of classes so that i wouldn't be far behind like i said about liberal arts colleges is that they make it very hard for you to transfer to another school because they have all of these weird ass core classes that don't mean anything to any other school so i was already behind in that sense an economics or a business degree at a liberal arts college in atlanta is not the same thing as a business or economics degree from jackson state university so there were a whole bunch of classes that i was going to be behind on so that's why i took the summer classes and things were looking good for me i did an internship in detroit and that summer i came home and i'm like okay it's grind time time to do what I need to do to get into Jackson State. I never considered Jackson State when I was applying to colleges the first time around my senior year of high school because not only have my parents gone to Jackson State, my mother has also taught at Jackson State and she really didn't like her experiences and she was like, you know, this, 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 this happened to me, but Jackson State is a great school you know, still consider it, but be warned that these are the things that you might experience. And I was like, okay, I'll keep this in the back of my mind. But another thing about me is that I came from a very small private school. And those who know me know that I struggle with really bad anxiety. And I was like, I don't know if I can do a large school, which is why I didn't apply to Jackson State. All the schools I applied to were small liberal arts schools. So Jackson State wasn't even on my radar, senior year of high school. But end of sophomore year i'm like okay i'm a different person i've lived around i've had some experiences i think i could handle going to a larger school so yeah i hit the ground running in august because the deadline to apply for this scholarship which was full tuition full board fees paid for and you got a book voucher so you're actually getting money back into your pocket and then if you had got outside scholarships that was also many that you got to pocket the deadline for that scholarship was november 15th and i was like okay i'm starting in august so that i have plenty of time to go ahead and apply to this scholarship because you needed record letters of recommendation and i think that you needed to write an essay too or something like that so i send in my application the only thing i hear is thank you for applying da, 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 da. so like around two weeks had gone by and I hadn't heard anything so I go up to the school and I'm like hey um I'm trying to apply to your school and I'm not getting a hold of anybody I'm calling and nobody's picking up so I find out who my admissions counselor is supposed to be as a transfer student I find out who my admissions counselor is supposed to be as a transfer student and I go in to see her and she tells me that I can't apply until I've completed the transfer requirements. A certain number of English credits I had already completed, the things that were holding me back, it was two sciences and two labs and I was finishing up my sciences and my labs that semester. By the way, this is the fall semester 2019 now and they're like, we can't accept you yet because you haven't finished these requirements and i was like well then tell me why you admit high school students when they haven't gotten their diploma yet that doesn't make any sense so she's like well it's really no big deal girl just come back after the semester ends and we'll admit you i said my semester ends in december and the deadline for the scholarship is november 15th so that's not gonna work and they're basically like oh hands tight sorry can't do anything about it and i'm like okay that's odd what am i going to be doing for the following semester because i graduated community college the fall of 2019 so that following semester i was going back to a four year i didn't know what i was going to do but i go back on the website and i see something that says if you submit your high school transcript as a transfer student with a associate's degree then you can go ahead and be admitted regardless of whether or not you met the um, requirements for transfer students so I go back in and I'm like, hey, I just saw this on your website. Is this true? And they're like, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, like let's do it. And I'm like, 
but you just told me that your hands were tied. That's how I should have known. That's where I should have known that things were not about to look up for me at Jackson State. I'm like, whatever, that's cool. I call up my godforsaken high school and they send my transcript to them. And so now I'm admitted. This is in September. Admitted into Jackson State. Check that off the list. The next thing is trying to get this scholarship. So I'm asking for letters of recommendations at my school. I'm getting together my essay and I'm ready to roll. So now I send in, I filled out the application because there's like a PDF application that you can download from the website. I filled out the application and I'm taking it in and every time I try to take it in and get more information, the scholarship coordinator is never there. And I'm like, okay, it's whatever, like it's still September, I still have time. I'm not tripping on it. But I still come up there because I also need to be meeting with financial aid. So I'm also, in addition to preparing the things that I need for my scholarship application, I'm also getting things together from financial aid, which was another hassle. So I'm constantly at the school and the financial aid and scholarship people, they're in the same building. So every time I'll go up to financial aid, I'm like, hey, is the scholarship coordinator here? And they're like, no, she's out on location doing so-and-so, so-and-so. And I'm like, when will she be back? And they're like, she'll be back, da, da 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 So I come in that day, still not back. And it just kept going like that until one day she was in her office. And I pulled up, I said, here you go. Here's my application for the Fight the Decapa Scholarship. I'm already admitted. I'm the perfect candidate. We can get this thing rolling. I will be in classrooms next semester. She tells me that that is an outdated application. Their application out is through an online portal and it's on a rolling basis. But when I go onto the website, I find the scholarship portal and it says that it's closed until next till next academic year, like not even next semester. Like there's no opportunity for you to get scholarship money halfway through the semester. But I was like, it says on the website that there is a deadline for fall applicants and there's a deadline for spring applicants. So why would the portal already be closed if there is an opportunity for me to get this scholarship halfway through the semester? So I'm basically not letting up because I know how I got to be on these people. I was not letting up. She basically tells me to come back next month because she said that there is a possibility that there is going to be funding because I wasn't the only person who came to her during the fall semester asking about the fact that a capitalist scholarship for the spring semester. She was like, I think it's like you and three other people who are asking for this scholarship. So come back next month and I'll see if we have some funding available even though the scholarship portal has closed for this year I said great so I'm just chilling this is October now October I'm chilling you know what I'm saying it is what it is and then I walk in probably like November 2nd because I think November 1st was a Sunday come in November 2nd Miss Ma'am is sitting right there at her desk and she's like I have great news we have the funding for you guys you and the other two three people y'all will be coming to Jackson State all you have to do is come in at the very first week of January in the new year and sign the scholarship um, contract and you guys will be good to go I said ooh, ooh wait I said look at me all of this hard work all of this run around paying off perfect now I can just enjoy my winter break in peace drove up to Detroit just chill hang out hung out with friends this was pre-corona I was just vibing knowing that when I got back to Mississippi I had a full ride scholarship and money in my pocket I'm chilling I'm Gucci I'm good so I come home after the holidays and I walk into Jackson State's campus RF Roberts Hall I think is the building and I'm like, yeah, hello, my name is Jasmine. I was told by so-and-so, so-and-so that I received the Phi Theta Kappa Scholarship. All I have to do is go ahead and sign the contract and everything will be set up for me. I already met with financial aid, things like that that's taken, that's done. This is a lady in financial aid because I couldn't find the lady I was talking to in scholarships, right? She's like, who is that person? I'm like, so-and-so, so-and-so. And she's like no no she doesn't work here and I don't know why she would tell you that because there is no funding there never was any funding and we don't open up the scholarship portal in the middle of the year and I was like no I know she told me that she told me that she said though that there was some more funding 
and even though the scholarship portal was closed she would be able to give it to me and she was like honey that is incorrect it was the vp of enrollment management she called me and she was like that is not correct i don't know why she would tell you that i'm so sorry and i'm like okay well so far there have been so many ups and downs on my college education i'm not even tripping on it at this point i'll take another semester off it is what it is i'm like can i go ahead and get started for the fall of 2020 then do my application for that and she's like i don't even know if there will be funding for the Phi Theta Kappa scholarship for fall 2020 either and then to make matters worse my financial aid counselor was trying to get me all squared away and this woman was like well we didn't even receive your financial aid documents even though i looked her in her eyes and handed her all of my financial documents in october of last year I forgot to tell y'all that at this point, this was last year, I had already gotten my class schedule, I had already gotten my housing. Mind you, I also had accommodations, so that was another step for me to get accommodations for my housing. I had all of that and I was literally squared away. So how can you tell me that I never submitted my financial aid documents when I have housing and a class schedule? I can't get those two things without financial aid. She was like, no, we have no re recollection of that. I was like, girl, I handed it to you. So financial aid lost my stuff. The person in scholarships apparently doesn't exist and she told me false information. Now it's January 1st. School is starting in two or three weeks. Like I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I just internalized the fact that I'm just gonna have to take another semester off as much as I hate it and be behind even more with my graduation for my bachelor's degree. So I'm like it is what it is. I'll go ahead and just start a applying to other schools for the fall of 2020 and take the spring of 2020 off. I put together an application for Bellhaven because Bellhaven is very tight with the school my mother teaches at and my mother's also a Phi Theta Kappa advisor and she's like oh like they're so great at Bellhaven they'll really take care of you and their business program is pretty good that's me looking at their program but I'm like this is a PWI. So yeah, I'm looking at Bellhaven. Really don't want to look at Bellhaven because not only is it a PWI, but it's also a Christian school. And I'm like, this just looks like too much for me. I don't think I can handle this. There is a reason I chose not to go to a PWI to begin with, but whatever. It looks looking like these are my only options here, right? And then my mother tells me about Tougaloo, which is another HBCU in the Jackson area. It's a small liberal art school, which is what I'm used to. And you might want to apply there. And the only thing about Tougaloo was that I wasn't really feeling their program. They didn't have a business program. It was economics with an emphasis in business. I was like, I really don't want to mess with that like I love economics but I'm really focused on business specific, specifically entrepreneurship which is why Jackson State really appear, appealed to me but like I said it's looking like I'm out of options now so whatever I go on Hulu's website and I find a pdf of their application so I print off their application I fill it out and I take it up to the school. I was like, wow, this is such a quaint little campus. Never been over here before. Never knew this was over here. I went to admissions. I met this woman. She looked at my application and she was like, oh, we don't have a, we don't do a PDF anymore. We actually have an online application portal. But I could tell she was like really interested in me. She was like, I can go get my laptop right now. You can fill it out while you're here. And I was like, oh, I was like, okay, I can just fill it out when I get home. She was like, no, you should really do it now. So I sit there and I fill out my application. I figured that you guys don't have any funding for this semester. I'm applying for the fall of 2020. And she's like, you know what? You, you just never know. Let, let's talk to our scholarship person and before we make any decisions. And she was like, he'll be here on XYZ day. So I come back and I'm telling him about what happened with Jackson State. And he told me that he just came from Jackson State, although he graduated from Tougaloo. He was like, you know, we do have a Phi Theta Kappa scholarship as well. It's not quite like Jackson State's, but it's still a pretty good scholarship. I think we can get you in this semester. Talking about the spring of 2020. Mind you, classes already started at Tougaloo. I was already going to be a week, a week behind. I was like, whoa, like, 
it's only my third day out here you know what i'm saying i just went from thinking i'm gonna be getting my degree from jackson state and being a fourth generation jackson state university hbc graduates to now popping up at this school going to this school that i honestly only heard about maybe twice in my whole life you know what i'm saying he was like i'll give you like a couple of days to think about it but not too long because the semester already started and i decided that i would you know go ahead and take it i was gonna be a week behind but I'm pretty on top of my stuff. I got caught up pretty quickly and so I started at Tougaloo last semester. Just finished up my second semester. I really love the school. It has afforded me so many opportunities. I met so many great people. Opportunities I know I would not have gotten if I had ended up at Jackson State. Sometimes I can't help but to feel like some students are just numbers at Jackson State. I don't know, I feel like Tougaloo is definitely a better fit for me and I've gotten a lot more guidance, a lot more mentorship at Tougaloo than I ever did at that school in Atlanta than I ever could have at Jackson State. So I'm very pleased with where my God, the universe, my divine spirit brought me and I'm finishing up in May with my bachelor's and although I will not be a fourth generation Jackson State University graduate, I still will be an HBCU fourth generation graduate. So better than nothing at a school I really, really love. That is my story of why I didn't go to Jackson State. And I wouldn't even wear this hoodie if it wasn't so freaking comfortable. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're still here, comment, comment bachelor's degree. 2021 okay down below please like comment share subscribe and i will see you in the next video